per thesis you uh, claim that the results that you uh, present are also applicable to, uh, let's say, uh, other uh, catchments, other areas in the world, right? Uh, now, the models that you have employed are, uh, well, basically a particular class of models uh, in which, uh, let's say, not all relevant hydrological processes are included. Uh, could you think of one important process uh, that is important in areas such as uh, the Netherlands or other uh, low-lying uh, delta regions that is not included in, for instance, the HBV model or uh, the GR4J model that you employ? Dear highly learned opponent, uh, thank you very much for this uh, uh, difficult question. Uh, could you give a short answer? Short answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It has uh, to do with shallow groundwater tables. Let's let's. Uh, yeah, you showed me the, the direction. Exactly. Yes, <laughs> but also the snow component we didn't use. Maybe not uh, uh, relevant for Netherlands, but for other river basins, uh, it might be necessary. But uh, our claim was, or the suggestion is, these models are uh, applicable to other river basins which are rain fed. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was an important component that it should be rain fed, not uh, snow dominated or something, because we, we it tested them in more cell. Uh, yeah. I was so ground, of, yeah, sorry. I was thinking along the lines of the effect of, let's say, uh, the surface water feedback, if you will, on the groundwater that plays a very yes. important uh, role in, in low-lying areas. And exactly, because slow flows is sustained by groundwater storage. In dry period. I think I have to intervene here, so okay. uh, we, I think we have to stop the yes. discussion. Perhaps you can do that later on. <laughs> Thank, um, you Thank you very, Thank much. very much. Professor Van Beek, may I ask you to continue the opposition? Thank you, Mr. Rector. Uh, dear candidate, uh, also my con congratulations with your thesis. Uh, in this time frame, uh, we pay so much attention to flooding, and so I welcome very much. Uh, that uh, for low flows, which I guess from a socio-economic point of view is more important than flooding, uh, that you have done your research on. Um, I, I would like to start the question with, with, with your definition of, of, of snow, you, snow depths. Uh, you, you, you use snow depths as, an, as one of the uh, predictors uh, for runoff. And uh, now, snow is falling, uh, but um, Skiing, from skiing I know that if, if you put pressure eh, on the snow, it gets more uh, condensed. Uh, and so it is not actually the snow depths, but the density of the snow uh, that uh, plays a major role. Uh, um, and that's why hydrologists in general, I understand, use snow water equivalent uh, as, an, as, as a measure eh, for uh, taking this one into account. But still you use uh, snow depths, eh, as I see on page 30. Can you explain that? Dear highly learned opponent, thank you very much for this uh, crucial uh, question on a weak point of our study. Uh, I have to say, snow water equivalent is the m most realistic way of assessing the uh, snow storage, snow water storage. However, when we uh, contacted uh, Switzerland Snow Institute to derive data, uh, we understood that, that the, the resolution or the availability of snow equivalent data is monthly. So we needed to make a downscaling from monthly to daily because all our uh, data, PPET uh, SL, are daily. Uh, some of the groundwater was too weekly, but groundwater doesn't change quickly, so you can downscale quickly. But snow, snow is a very sensitive uh, data that uh, to downscale you need really good catchment characteristics. That's why we didn't risk too much to use monthly snow equivalent to change it to daily and then use it. It would be more er erroneous. And when we uh, asked their uh, uh, comments, uh, they suggested the fresh snow height, not snow depth, but fresh snow height could be a good uh, variable. Of course, these uh, sensitive issues that uh, the fresh snow height might change with density and uh, even with 
uh, some pressure. The height might be not realistic because of uh, uh, gravity. It will, it can look short, but yeah, I agree this point. But the availability of data uh, lead us to use uh, fresh snow height. Okay, that that explains it. Why you have not used it because of data limitations. I, I would like to continue on, on what uh, Professor Armhut also discussed on uh, your, your conclusion uh, that a rainfall prediction uh, is uh, a less an important parameter uh, than uh, the, the model uncertainty. Uh, and, and also, you mentioned already uh, that the best would have been uh, to use the model and then to use the perfect uh, prediction, uh, and that would be the actual rainfall that has been measured. Uh, so then you could uh, test uh, the, um, uh, ah, the uncertainty of the model, and then you could see if you have the prediction. How it, what do you think would come out of such analysis? You have not done it, uh, but, but can you predict what would come out of it? Dear highly learned opponent, thank you very much uh, for, for this question. Uh, leading to a very good point which I, want, I always wanted to say because I believe in a forecast if, uh, if the forecast is a game using observed data is out of the rule of the game because you will never have a, a, a perfect forecast for a real forecast Yeah, but this is about uh, the, your conclusion that you draw uh, that the model uncertainty is more important than the input uncertainty Yes, uh, we believe that the, the uh, control forecast is the best available deterministic forecast mm -hmm. which is very close to the perfect forecast. We used that and we made our conclusions based on that. But we, we said as a forecast paper using for best forecast uh, data or observed data is out of the rule, uh, uh, rule of the game. We would hamper the rule of the game. So we, we stick on the control forecast. One of the ensemble is the best deterministic forecast, which we could use. So uh, that is the justification of our, uh, our claim that uh, input uncertainty is less important than parameter uncertainty. But if you would have done that calculation, would the uncertainty be of the combined uncertainty bigger or smaller? Uh, even uh, uh, dear highly learned opponent, uh, uh, I believe it would affect the results considerably. Uh, even the observed discharge has some limitations with uh, coming uh, to, uh, transferring uh, observed uh, water levels to discharge. Even there, there is uncertainty which is affecting. Uh, if you go more important or more detailed uncertainties, all will. Uh, have some uh, effects that we need to apportion to the parts. Uh, therefore, even using the best forecast, we will have inevitable uncertainties, which I cannot assume from this moment, but there are some uh, literature which uh, assess this uh, uh, just because of this uh, discharge curves, how it affects the uncertainty. Yeah. That still would be nice to do. Yes. Yeah. Exercise. Some of like maybe you know, a nice job for a uh, student in his MSc thesis. Um, now, my, my last question is about chapter two and then about uh, the figures that uh, you made. Uh, for example, take figure two point eight, um, in which you show that um, that this is the cross correlation coefficients between low flows. Uh, and several parameters. And if you take, for example, the seasonal one and the bottom one uh, for, 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 the, for the snow, uh, then you see uh, that there is a positive correlation and a negative correlation. Uh, uh, now, that, that's too difficult for me. Uh, okay. Can you explain, first of all, uh, how you have made uh, this figure? Yes. And secondly, what is the physical explanation uh, why in the same figure, hey, you will have this positive and negative correlation. Uh, dear highly learned opponent, another critical question came. Uh, we looked at, from physical aspect, uh, which might affect 
uh, the correlation coefficient positive or negative. Uh, the main reason for a negative correlation is while one is increasing, if the other is uh, decreasing, like uh, higher evaporation and lowering water levels. Uh, then the expected correlation coefficient should be negative. It is going a, a diff different direction. But if it is like snow, more snow, more le water levels, or uh, more precipitation, rainfall, more, then it is uh, uh, directly in the same direction and positive. This is the main reason for ET. ET is uh, more ET and uh, lower lower uh, uh, water levels. This is the main reason. But to, to be able to sh uh, show on, uh, on this figure, we, we, looked at only, we showed only absolute values to include ET as well. But uh, a question can rise why other uh, variables doesn't have a negative uh, value, like snow. Why they are not uh, negative? Uh, uh, the snow is negative in this figure, huh? the blue part. No, the, the y-axis is always positive, uh, uh, the figure 275. I have two... two ah, two, which two figure? Eight. I two eight. Eight. Okay, eight. okay. On page 41. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there are... Uh, I mentioned in the uh, discussion part that uh, the two poles in the correlation uh, and when you make too much moving average then <coughs> the data becomes really flattened and uh, it becomes uh, converging the, the data and it is just that statistically uh, becoming changing in the direction normally from physical point of view we must be carefully looked as a hydrologist which might have meaning if it is uh, like we, we made uh, here, uh, we uh, uh, omitted some uh, higher correlations because they were not physically meaningful. So this figure should be carefully uh, uh, understood. Okay, I agree with yes. you. And I, I guess that also the high temporal resolution, and how higher it is, how yeah. doubt, more doubtful yeah, exactly. the control exactly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Professor Su, may I ask you to ask your questions? Thank you, Mr. Rector, dear candidate. Um, I read your thesis with um, a lot of uh, interest. Um, from a methodological point of view, you have dealt with uh, different uh, methods, including um, hydrological models, atmospheric analysis, and uh, climate model outputs. Um, what I would like to uh, discuss with you is um, um, related to some uh, technical issues. I'm not going into uh, very detailed uh, numbers and the figures uh, to look at what you have done because from a climate uh, simulation point of view, many of those simulations are actually not accurate at all. So I mean, it does not make too much sense to really discuss something that is not, uh, not uh, um, accurate and when we change the scenarios of course we have also quite different simulations uh, so I want to start with actually trying to look at the kind of data you use if you are doing um, say one day or ten day forecasts you make sure you use ECMWF forecasts now what is the relationship of the memory of the ECMWF forecasts with respect to the rain flow and the water flow in the rain river so if you try to use those two different uh, data, what are the major points that you have to look at? Dear highly learned opponent, uh, I missed the last uh, part of uh, your question because I was thinking we go to the last chapter, climate, but then uh, ECMWF uh, forecast data. Uh, yeah. uh, now in different chapters you use different, yes, different yes, types of things. And yes. uh, I was saying that we are not going to into the details of yeah. the climate simulation part, yes, so yes. we will skip skip that part. Okay. Instead, we come to a little bit more realistic. That is the ECMWF forecast. Yes. Okay. Yes. Chapter uh, three, we, four. Yeah, yes. they are quite uh, quite often used. Now, my question is that uh, basically, if you look at the forecast data, and if you look at the river rainfall, 
in the river because you are trying to look at the uh, low flow. Huh? Yes. So now my question is actually, what is the kind of memory in the model or in the data, in, in the forecast data, and what is the memory in the rain, rain river if you just take a few stations, suppose you take low beta and you take Copeland's, what is the river, what is the memory of the river flow with respect to what you are trying to use in, in your input. Then we will go to some uh, process level and try to look at, okay, if you're trying to use that, what kind of process are important? Is snow important? Is precipitation important? Or is evaporation or groundwater more, more, more important? Dear highly learned opponent, now I got... Uh, I mean, you know, this is just, uh, yes. this is not an exam, this is a discussion. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, regarding the memory uh, of uh, the Rhine, uh, it's a large river. So even the travel time, concentration time, if you look at those uh, uh, variables, we will see uh, 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 at least two two days travel time uh, from Koblenz yeah. and f uh, five, six days uh, there is a Rhine expert over there if he confirms five, six or four, five days travel time from uh, Alpine uh, Switzerland. So it is a, a kind of indicator of memory just in the discharge data. But in the forecast data uh, we may l need to look at auto correlations uh, to identify this. We didn't uh, we haven't done it, uh, so. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> if you have not done that, then we are not going to discuss that part. Um, so suppose you want to use the ECMW forecast, ten days forecast or system forecast in your in your forecast for low flow. What is the best way to use that? Do you just use it as such, or do you somehow look look at the kind of uh, memory? in the model and the memory in the Rhine River because it depends very much how the data, what is the memory in the data, if you can use it or not. Suppose you want to use uh, daily rainfall data. Yeah. I mean, what is the memory in the model of the daily rainfall compared to the kind of uh, uh, forecast period you, you want to do? I mean, if that is not taking into account your hydrological model, those two models that you used, there are basically just a transfer function. You put something in and something comes out. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, they, 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 they do not have a, the atmospheric part, right? Indirectly, P and PET uh, might represent the atmospheric part, but uh, uh, regarding the use of uh, forecast data, uh, more than uh, six day lead time are not reliable yet. Mm -hmm. So we should be very careful by using weather forecasts. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, regarding the uh, model memory, the time step of the models that I use are daily. So we assume that if we use the, 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 uh, today's P and today's PET, we, we find out uh, the uh, Q at the end of the day or at the end of the time period. Uh, so this is the, I think, memory. But uh, the, the, the release from groundwater may have a bit softer uh, release, which might have longer memory. And uh, a model for low flows with a strong groundwater component uh, for such a region like Netherlands would be uh, much better. But then if you go back to your problem, uh, if you are trying to forecast low flow at uh, low heat, uh, I mean, assume that you have six days or seven days of memory for the water transfer from the Alp over the time to low bit. Yeah. And if you're trying to do a daily step and use a model components on the daily step. So the question here is that, uh, okay, if my atmospheric forecasts are only valid for two days or three days, so you said six days, you said? Yeah. Okay, uh, can you actually cover a period that is longer than that you know, in terms of low flow? You are also moving all the way to 90 days of kind of estimate to low flow. So here, basically, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, okay, what is the real information in the data you use as input? And what is the valid output with regard to the period of prediction? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the amount will be even less accurate in a way. 
Dear High uh, Lord Opponent, uh, I agree with your point. Um, with the with the memory uh, of six days from uh, upper uh, upstream and downstream are taking care of uh, uh, the flow routing part. So uh, the uh, model developers, especially in the last chapter when we used uh, HPV based on uh, FIS NL, uh, it is uh, sub-basin uh, average PPET and then outlets are flow routed using SOBEC and in this part the travel time and all these uh, parameters are involved uh, to consider the six day difference of uh, uh, in the outlet lobby. Uh, so um, but other me memory uh, memory uh, in the rainfall data still I cannot comment much uh, with my uh, uh, experience from this thesis. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's stop there and let's have a look at the artificial neural network. Yes, um, you are trying to use that to forecast the low flows, okay, or yes. low flow extremes yes. actually. Uh, when training the artificial neural network, you use the input data which are observed, huh? yes. and you try to, after that, after training the uh, neural network, you try to use that to predict some extremes in the change the climate for future. You, you are going to use that to do predictions. It was for seasonal forecast. Climate okay. only uh, with HPV, okay. which was physically strong uh, and uh, rooted. Yeah. Yeah. So ANL models, we, we never used it for climate impact assessment. Okay. Yes. You, but, but you still use it for low flow forecasting. Exactly. Thank you, Ms. Beagle. You can take them if I ask you to take your seats. I joined the public defense of the top of the board of the University of Tenda.